what's the best approach to rebooting the world economy. That's the title of our session today. And when you talk about rebooting the global economy, that suggests something pretty radical. Because when you reboot a computer, you have to turn it off first. But when we reboot an economy, we cannot turn it off. We cannot wipe the slates clean before it gets start all over again. Sooner than most people think, millions of Americans will potentially be pushed down out of the middle class, out of private retirement, and out of a decent life based on independence and privacy into a collectivist nightmare he calls financial lockdown. So what would the new Bretton Woods look like? Earlier this week, President Joe Biden signed an executive order asking the government to examine the risks and benefits of cryptocurrencies. Here to help us connect the dots of everything happening is Willem Middlecope. He's the author of The Big Reset, and we always have a great conversation. Willem, uh, good to see you again. Yeah, I think that's the, that was buried almost in this executive order. Of course, everybody was looking for uh, what will be the news on, on Bitcoin, on crypto. Uh, and, and then we found this, uh, well, this message that uh, the digital dollar, um, the US will start a digital dollar project. And of course, we knew this was a research project and the US always played it down that it was just a research. But I think there was a, this was the first confirmation especially from the president, that uh, the, the, they will start to roll out uh, the digital dollar in the next uh, few years. But I think they need to do some testing first, but it, it will have huge uh, repercussions. So this, this, is, this is a key moment, Willem. And, and you know, if you do a little digging, I, I, I found a speech from uh, the Fed back in, in February, end of February, just a few weeks ago, uh, where Governor Brainard said, um, you know, the Federal Reserve needs to be preparing for the payment landscape of the future, even as we continue to make improvements to meet today's needs. In light of the rapid digitalization of the financial system, the Fed has been thinking critically about whether there is a role for a potential U.S. central bank digital currency. So all roads seem to be pointing to the coming digital currency. The question is, how are they going to get people's buy-in for this? Oh, well, that's quite easy. Uh, if you uh, advise people as a government uh, to go to the App Store and uh, download the Fed wallet and you tell people there will be $10 on the Fed wallet, uh, once you downloaded it, everybody will jump on it. And actually in Ukraine, we have seen something like this. Uh, this uh, there was the start uh, last month of an e-wallet in which the government advised people you can download this e-wallet and you can get subsidies, uh, but only if you're vaccinated. So you see this merger of, uh, well, uh, e-money, uh, electronic money, digital money, but only if you well behave. So this reminds me on the China system where the credit score is, uh, well, is used in, in a way to uh, take away part of your freedom if you don't behave well. And this, this is what can happen now in the West as well. Does modern monetary theory have to go digital? Well, it helps. <laughs> it helps because um, you'll have uh, money which is highly programmable. Uh, so you can uh, you can uh, say to people you you have to spend this money before the end of the year because otherwise it will uh, well it won't be there on your wallet anymore. You can. Uh, tell people where they uh, should spend it on. So you can, can't spend on holidays, but you can spend it on energy and food. And I think this is uh, something which uh, authorities, they, they love it because they will get more control over their people and they can follow each and every payment. And you, you will leave uh, traces everywhere. So in tandem, you know, with going digital is the push to get to zero net uh, emissions by, you know, 20 50. It, you it will all, yes, sorry. Uh, it will all be connected uh, because um, they will know exactly well, once we have this di fully digital payment system and we all have this e wallet, they know exactly what you buy, they know exactly where you go, and they will, they will calculate your, your CO2 footprint. And when you, um, when you have, buy too many airline tickets, you will be punished in a way. And, um, so it, it will all be connected. So they will tell you this is all needed to, to fight climate change. There will be the spin, but it's it's all about control and it's all about maintaining the 
current uh, dollar-centered world reserve system, and of course, there's a lot of there's a lot at stake here. Interesting, uh, and to that point, I dug up a tweet from a UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, who says, uh, who early in the year uh, named his, uh, you know, the top five uh, things we should be fighting for around the world right now. Uh, number one, fighting COVID. His number two, ahead of tackling climate change, was transforming the global financial system. Number two, transforming the global financial system, then tackling the climate crisis, putting people at the center of the digital world, and delivering sustainable peace. But let's hone in on that transforming the global financial system. What does that involve, Lula? What well, does that mean? Um, I published the big reset in 2004, 14, sorry, and um, came to the conclusion, actually it was printed on the back cover around 2020, we need to change uh, the international monetary system, we need to move it to the next phase, I call this a monetary reset, uh, and we've seen, I, I, we've seen many signs pointing towards this monetary reset. And the example you um, you just mentioned is very interesting because if you look into his speech, he actually said COVID-19 uh, also exposed deficiencies in the global financial system. To tackle these weaknesses and integrate the global financial system with other global priorities, think climate change, uh, the UN proposes holding summits every two years, uh, summits of the 20 leading economies. So this actually tells you he wants to organize a new Bretton Woods conference with the leading 20 companies. What would the new Bretton Woods look like? I studied a lot of academic papers. And if you study the speeches of Mark Carney, because he's been a front runner on this, actually he proposed in Jackson Hole that the successor for the dollar should not be one currency, but should be a digital currency, a synthetic world reserve currency, he mentioned it one day. So uh, you might be aware of the SDR, which is the currency basket of the IMF. In the currency basket of the IMF are five currencies now, the dollar, the euro, the pound, the yen, and renminbi. The renminbi was added in 2015. So there you have a currency basket which, which could be used 